I'll tell you some of our good news in the last month. Um, the University of Toronto just renewed with us. So that's huge. They're kind of like the Harvard of Canada, right? So I'm pretty thrilled. Mm -hmm. And uh, we picked up a couple new customers. And we're in Africa and the Middle East too. So uh, it's been a, a, good, a good year so far. And uh, we're kind of hopeful. We have a couple little trials out there right now. Uh, some of them would be pretty fun to pick up. All of them would be fun to pick up. Who am I kidding? We need cash. Listen, it might be helpful if you gave everybody the one sentence on Sidecar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're an e-learning platform where anyone, regardless of their tech skills, can create interactive tutorials with any web content. So you do not have to insert code into the website to make your tutorial work with it. Very good. Um, Thank you, Jason. Yep. And so let's get started on um, the research. The big thing is, I, I um, um, some of you, I'll be able to help out a lot. Uh, some of you, not so much. And it's uh, a learning uh, process. I wish I could help everyone a lot. Um, but sometimes we just, you know, depending on where you are in the development stage, um, uh, I can be more or less helpful depending on your technology and different things like that. So into the chat, I put this little thing called a libguide. And let me just, uh, oh, the other thing too is um, uh, I'm glad to meet with you, your company um, individually uh, via Zoom. Um, my little automatic meet with me um, button, I, I destroyed it by accident. So I hope to have that back live on Monday so you can just set up an appointment. Um, generally, you know, plan an hour and if we do it for less, it, it, it's great. Um, I know I've worked with Stackhouse in the past, so we, we had some good luck there. Um, but anyways, so yeah, feel free to meet with me. If you send me an email and you don't hear back from me, I'm not blowing you off. They, um, uh, generally, I try to respond within 24 hours. Feel free to be pushy. I like pushy. All right. I just get busy or I get stuck in long library meetings and get behind on my emails. So feel free to be pushy. And I encourage it. How do you get in contact with me? Well, the link here. Um, and if you want, you can send e the, any questions you have to both Ryan and I at the same time. Uh, Ryan is in his last semester of his master's program, and he's been helping out, me out quite a bit. And it would be great for him to get some experience working with some of you all and your very interesting questions. So send it to both of us. All right. Um, I'm, I'm going to. The other thing is, how do you have access to this? Right. And that's one of the tricky parts. So um, as far as I'm concerned, this is an educational process. And, um, and since some of you will go through this process and maybe decide not to have a company, I hope not, but maybe some of you will, um, that's the, where I take it from because we have educational uh, contracts, okay? Uh, the other thing that's important is, you know, I always tell people that the other reason I'm super not concerned is because as you develop as a company, the last thing you want to do is drive to the U of A and get on the free Wi-Fi to get this information, you know, your time is going to be much too valuable. So once you hit that point, you'll be aware of these resources out there and you'll purchase them normally. But for now, if you have the time and you lack access to it, you can go to the U of A Wi-Fi anywhere where you can log on as a guest and you can access a lot of these resources. As I go through, I'll try to remember which ones you won't be able to and tell you. But of course, if you meet with me and we find some good stuff, you know, uh, I'm willing to work with you, okay? So that's the big thing. Um, over here, this was set up for the entrepreneurial class um, at uh, the U of A. I've, I worked with McGuire Center quite a bit, but you can kind of see how we have it divided up and you'll see some of these resources in multiple tabs, it just depends on how you're going to use them, okay? But as you go through, you know, um, the idea one is, uh, has some non-traditional uh, resources. I'm not gonna cover it today, but you should think about it because 
what CQ researcher is, is like this introductory um, to a topic for, but an academic introductory, right? And because so many people assume that you're an expert on the topic, you know, sometimes it's good or they dive right into a narrow aspect of the topic. Sometimes it's good to go back and look at the idea that you're doing and see how it relates to bigger picture items. So like solar is fairly obvious, right? For example, um, but if you go here, you might pull some larger picture data in. I'm, I don't know, um, but it's something to think about. And the other thing I love because I'm really into authority, like I, I don't believe that like, you know, uh, a rock star or a uh, movie star, you, I don't think you should be getting your uh, research advice from them, unless of course they, it's being a rock star or something like that. So um, I strongly encourage you to um, seek out the geeks who are the real experts. And so uh, a lot of our stuff, we, we, you know, the people have real authority and are specialists in the topic area that they're writing about. So keep that in mind, but you can come here and take a look around, all right? Um, I know you're well beyond ideas, but if you want to take a broader view. I'm going to jump through this, and I'm hoping people will jump in with some research questions as we go through, uh, because that's how I plan on running it today um, in my chat isn't coming up for some reason. So let me try, ah, there it is. Okay, so uh, be sure to ask questions. But real quick, we jump into um, uh, industry research in business and uh, market sizing. These are some of the, the reports we have and probably uh, we lost BCC research recently and that's a big bummer, um, especially for a lot of your topics, but uh, Frost and Sullivan for more technical and I should have opened that up. Um, and the nice thing they did is from the link uh, that you can now download the reports. In the past, I had to give you a special backdoor way to do it. But now you can go into Mintel and actually Mintel, uh, the salesman started me working with Tech Launch Arizona and the salesman was in India. So he introduced me uh, in the past. Yes, I agree. Uh, we had budget cuts though, it stinks. Um, do we have mark, market and markets? No, we don't. We, we, we do um, have other ones. Um, Ibis World is more of, let, let's go down here. Um, Ibis World is more of a consumer goods type thing, you know? Um, sometimes uh, depending on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, IBIS is very general. Um, depending on the industry, we, we do best with consumer type um, products because there's just more data out there for market sizing. But sometimes marketresearch.com academic has, especially around medical, um, has some good reports and um, a couple other fields. They have reports that are called icon reports, which they claim they have the latent demand for every report and for every city around the world. And I don't believe that, obviously. Um, so a lot of times when I do searching in marketresearch.com, I do minus icon, okay? Um, so let me see here, Euromonitor is consumer. I'm, I'm just looking through to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Uh, PitchBook is good for investor information, and we're really excited to have that. A lot of people have been very supportive in getting the library to pick that up and drop a couple other ones, and it's great. And I'll walk through that in a little bit. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, CB Insights is gone. Mintel, um, Consumer Insights. If you're into your Consumer Insights, this this is very important. If any of you, um, yeah, okay. So you're in uh, California and I think you're gonna, unless you have an intern working for you or you meet with me, you're pretty much gonna, um, you, it would be very tough for you to get access. I know Eric is working on um, 
something that may or may not happen. Um, but uh, yeah, but we're willing to work with you. Yeah, so stay tuned um, about uh, on, on, on some work that we're undertaking right now to see if we can get all of you unfiltered access to these resources. Um, it, it's looking pretty positive, but uh, if it happens, I can tell you we'd be one of the first universities in the nation uh, to be able to do this. Uh, but I will say for those of you not located here, um, you know, provided Jason has, has the time resource available, connect with Jason and Jason can be a conduit to a lot of these. So if you have a request, if you have something that you're looking for, if you need some guidance on that, um, Jason has been able to do that in the past. The other um, resource that we have and folks that have access to these is our interns. And surprisingly, we do not have um, just this huge bucket of requests for interns. Um, all of you know um, that we have uh, interns that we hire each semester, and a lot of their focus is to do this work on your behalf. So um, what you have to do, and Anita will remind you of that uh, probably in every weekly note, but you just submit a, a form to us saying what you're hoping to find out um, in about the scope of 40 hours with our interns, and those interns, uh, on based on availability and request, will go to work for you. Um, so we do have other ways to access these resources in addition to us uh, identifying the best way to get you just the ability to click through without being on UA Wi-Fi. So there is still the ability. Um, we'll find every inroad possible because that's our job. And uh, Jason's uh, certainly one of those resources when he has the time. Yes. And uh, one of the startups that used the interns the best was uh, Courtney uh, yeah. from Imagine. I mean she worked them right and it was amazing to see um, and she got you know she knew what she wanted and she um uh you know made them really good researchers which is really nice and so you're you're you would be helping the educational process by being demanding with them you know not in a, a rude way obviously but in the type of information you need and uh, see what they can do for you because it does make them good researchers uh, we do have PR Newswire information on a couple resources. And uh, if I forget to show that to you, um, I'll show you the resource where we do have it. Um, actually, I'll just do it now because it's not actually on this little lib guide. It's uh, in the main library. And if you go to just see all databases and I'll share it with you, it's Access World News. And at times I wish we didn't have access to it because it always clogs up my, um, my search results uh, in Access World News. But that's one of the good ones. And another one that um, I'm gonna add in here is Nexus Uni for new searches. Um, and they have newspaper searches worldwide, so... Um, and they seem to do really good with newspapers out of India for some reason. So um, if, if depending on where your market is, you can limit by geography and see and search local newspapers and information. But um, the first one, Access World News, does have PR Newswire type information. All right, jumping back in. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, company research. Um, so Orbis uh, has company information worldwide. It's a little slow and painful to use. Um, obviously, the smaller the company, you know, the less accurate. If you're looking at 100 small companies in a particular industry, in a particular country, probably going to be accurate. If you get down to one company, you can see a lot of variance in accuracy, right? So that's fairly typical. The larger the sample size, the more inform, you know, the better the quality of data, right? Um, Reference USA, uh, you all have access to this if you have um, an Arizona license or you currently reside in Arizona. You can get this through the um, do I have access to databases with names of contacts and contact information? Um, what do you mean? 
many times we need to conduct uh, uh, focus market research, interviewing companies or identifying people that would be interested in collaborating or partnering with us. And so having access to databases that have the names of the companies, but also a contact person that's a relevant yes. decision maker or engineer within the company, someone who, uh, who we can talk to. Yes, and that's Reference USA is an excellent one for that, um, but so is Orbis. Uh, Reference USA, I call it the stalker um, <laughs> database. Yes, that's what I want. Yes, yes, that's what it is. You know, you okay. can go in and, okay. and look up look up consumers. You can go there and look me up. The data is a little out of date and see where <laughs> I live. Um, oh my gosh. Enough, yeah, how much my home value is, uh, the median, what they're predicting my median income is. I, I'm okay, you know, people can go and look, it's wrong. You know what I mean? Um, in that case, but um, it depends on the person. Sometimes you get some really good information on their uh, consumer habits, but you can also look up by company and they ha also have specialized medical databases, which they, um, you can look up the medical people in a general database, in their general business database too. The nice thing about the medical databases, and I'll, how about if I just jump in and show you that? That'd be great. Okay. And I'll show you where everyone in the state of Arizona has access to, and that is Arizona State Library. And if you're a Pima Public Library member, I'm going to show you all the places that you have access to it. Um, Pima Public Library. And this is another thing, don't blow off your public library. <laughs> See what they have to help you. Um, people often overlook them. All right, and if we go here to the e-library and they call it Ignite, right? You know, uh, everyone's got a brand. Um, let me see here. And you can see, um, you know, different, a lot of these uh, resources focus on what you would consider lifestyle businesses, I guess, um, but not necessarily, you can use them. Um, and here, is where you can get Reference USA if you're a Pima Public Library. And I'm not gonna jump in there because uh, um, uh, I clean my cookies and I forget my password. So I won't be able to get in right now. The other one are like these business plan handbooks. They do a really nice job. The Small Business Reference Center is also very nice. And here's Newsbank. And I'm not sure if Newsbank has those or not. If you're just a general um, uh, state of Arizona person, or maybe, uh, you know, much to your embarrassment, you don't have a Pima Public Library card, and you really should, um, it's a great resource. You can come here and let's see what happens when I have to put my zip code in, right? And I put my zip code in, and now I have access, all right? So, oh, they're calling it data axle now, all right? Um, I wish some of these uh, people would talk to me before they rebrand. I think that's a horrible, horrible, like it sounds like a couple of dudes sat around and rebranded it, you know what I mean? But um, here you can look for businesses, here you can look for healthcare people, here you can look for individuals. So you can do, now, you can do searches on uh, political belief, on uh, their religion, but you can't look up individuals on that. So I could go down to a zip code level and know how many, I don't know, Catholics are living in that zip code or how many um, Republicans are or whatever, you know? So that's the type of thing you can do here. Um, but uh, to look up the businesses, I'm just gonna make this really quick. And you can see the data axle, right, everyone? Okay, so right here, the first thing you'll notice uh, if you wanna do unverified. So if your customers work out of their home, like people who cut hair or um, whatever, uh, mechanic shops, you might have to do unverified, okay? 
And what does verified mean? It means this company in Nebraska, Omaha, called up someone and talk to them at that business, all right? So if we were gonna just do, let's say you wanna find solar installation, right? And I'm gonna come here and you'll notice the NAICS, which is the census system for numbering businesses, right? You've probably heard of the census, it's in the constitution, happens every 10 years, we just had one. Uh, we also do a business census every five years. Um, businesses are required to uh, give their information up. And you also, also have the um, old SIC. And I'm just going to do solar. And I'm going to try installation. Um, always start broad with our resources um, because a lot of times the search interface faces aren't, aren't, aren't the best. So here we got solar panel installation. It looks like a good number. I'm gonna update my count and I'm down to 1500 businesses. If I include unverified, I'm up to 2300. And since there probably are a number of uh, smaller businesses that install so, uh, solar, I might want to include it, okay? Then I can go, well, let's look at a metro area. And if I go down and we'll look at lovely uh, Tucson, um, there's 16, right? And if I can go in and I can view the results, um, you can start to see all the people. And sometimes you get bad ones. Like, I guess because with all machine learning, if your algorithm isn't great, uh, Sunshine Carpet Cleaner uh, is a solar company. So you have to do this, uh, the smell test, right? But it looks like most of these are good. I don't know why fish, maybe fish window cleaning, clean solar panels, which people don't do enough is my understanding. Let's take a look at one of these. And I'm gonna look for one that has an executive. And let's see what custom solar and leisure is or for you, for those of you from Britain, leisure. Um, here we are, uh, the, some of the different codes, um, right? So if you see one that's better, you can search by it. Uh, here is, they have a good, very good credit rating. They're estimating four people. They're estimating 3.2 million. This database focuses on the US. So if you are from around the world, let's say Europe, um, there is a big difference uh, for private companies. Private companies don't have to give up their information. In a lot of places in Europe, you can go to the Corporation Commission and for a euro or two or a pound or two, you can buy the company's financials, the private company's financials. Um, so here in the US um, with private companies, it becomes much more difficult to um, uh, estimate their earnings. So it looks like they only have one executive in this directory. Uh, there are some guesstimations on what they're spending on these various uh, common accounting line items. Um, you'll see this a lot. Uh, maybe they took out a loan during this period, so they were able to buy info on this company, and now the company doesn't have a loan. My friend has a manufacturing company up here in Michigan. And um, for years, he, he does uh, um, medical manufacturing. And for years, which is a very cash rich type of manufacturing, by the way, so much so he never took out a loan. And then they bought this really super expensive piece of machinery and they decided to finance it. And all of a sudden, some of his financials popped up here. But this is what you can come up with uh, about the company. If you say, I think you can download up to 200 at a time. And I always like, to, I'm gonna show you detailed. I would suggest you do custom, but for fun, I'll download these records and show you the details. And you can do this for consumers too. If you have, um, uh, let me move it over here, whoops. I have a really old second, um, ah, drives me crazy, second monitor. And um, 
there we go. All right, here it is. You can go through here and you can get all sorts of information. Um, you know, there's obviously a few that got in here that probably aren't relevant. Um, you can even look up menu items. Um, if it was, these probably won't be selling food, so um, they're not going to be here, but you can get a feel for how long they've been on the database. I have a theory that um, like Mexican restaurants in Tucson, if they've been opened for more than three years, they have to be really good. And so I thought, well, if they've been in this database for more than three years, they must be really good, right? And so far that's proven to be true. Um, but you can see all the, with these smaller companies, but you can do some summation here and different things like that, okay? But that's what you can do with this and you have access to it through um, the Arizona State Library. But if you're a Pima Public Library member, I would strongly encourage you to access it via that so it gets counted in our statistics, okay? Um, if you live elsewhere, take a look and see what your public library has. I think Pima's pretty good, but let's say, you're, you're, I know this because I used to live in the state of Michigan. Mel is outstanding in Michigan, Michigan Electronic Library. All right. They have some good stuff for businesses. Let me jump back. Does anyone have anything that they would like me to try to look up? Feel free. If not, I'll keep. Uh, babbling on. I do that well. All right. Um, so let's just do real quick. Um, edge computing is finally becoming uh, popular. Um, so Gartner is a great resource. Uh, I know like Microsoft, the, the student teams that do consulting projects for Microsoft, this is a big deal for Microsoft using research from here. Uh, we do not have the energy one though, unfortunately, and I heard several. That would be a great thing if we could figure out a way to get the energy, access to the energy one. That would be outstanding uh, if anyone, but this one right here, the library spends 150, not the library, the university spends $150,000 a year to have access to it, okay? Uh, and you heard me right, $150,000, I think, or no, it's 120, sorry. The library spends 30 to get access, UITS has it. Um, but they have a module for energy that it would be awesome if we got it. And especially um, for the companies, it'd be a real, I think it could be a real good selling point. So perhaps we can try to figure out what the pricing is. And the guy that's ahead of research here is on the Eller board too. So um, we might be able to work something out. But you know they do strategic roadmaps, which are nice. The hype cycle is what they're, um, one of the things they're known for. And I happen to agree with them. Edge computing is on the um, peak. It's now entered the peak of inflated expectations. And pretty soon it's gonna drop down here. And if you look at the internet of things, it's at the low point of the trough of disillusionment, disillusionment, but um, they're predicting where it is on its life cycle. So here people get excited about it. Uh, and then here they realize what it can't do. And then here they figure out how to utilize the tech, right? They also have their magic quadrant. So let's see if I can find a magic quadrant. Um, let's do magic, edge computing magic quadrant. Let's see where that is. Uh, maybe it's here. Um, they have lots of pretty pictures, you know, as a business major, I have my MBA, right? So I love pretty pictures and bullet points, man. Woo. Um, let's see what we got here. Two by two charts is another area that I love to I love to live in and they have it all and I don't see their um, their stuff here oh
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, there is. Um, what I would do, I think we lost one of the best tools we had to cut. Um, I, I, there's a couple tools and that's a good question. Um, let me think here. I'm thinking because I'm of course drawing a blank right about now, because we used to, do we still have web assigns? I don't know. We've gone through a lot of cuts and to be honest with you, I've lost track of what's been cut uh, when, and we lost our Derwent Innovations Index. So I'm having to relearn some of these free patent sources. And it looks like we've lost Web of Science, Scopus. But we can go to Scopus. And if we go down to Scopus, here it is. And it moves slowly. So um, do, do you have any keywords? Um, oh, ResearchGate too, yes. Yes, ResearchGate, yes, I've heard of that. But I was just curious if, uh, if you know, there's some kind of a way to, to you know, research a specific demo demographic, like if there's some kind of platform, because this is all really new to me, so. You and mean I kind of need to of, of researchers, right? Researchers, like yeah, and and their contact information, because I'm kind of yeah. needing that right now for yeah for my own uh, project. So yeah, I'm going to stick on edge computing. All right. Oh, okay. And just or if you have search terms, I can do something else. Oh, I can. Uh, yeah, let's do plant extracellular vesicles. <laughs> All right. Plant. So plant. You're going to have to spell the second word. Yes. E X T R A extra, and then cellular C E L L U L A R. Yep, that's it. Space and then a space and then uh, vesicles. Oops, hit, uh, oops, let me go back. That's okay. Um, let me go back to and a space and what? There you what go. Was Ves vesicles V E S I C L E S. And what we can do here, That's... you um, you can see the authors, right? Um, I'm still, I used to use Web of Science and uh -huh. they had contact information for all the researchers there. I'm okay. pretty sure that it does with this too. And we this could- This is great. Even, yeah, we could even do something like a cited by, you know? Okay. If, um, this is date newest. Okay. Yeah. And cited by highest, you could do it that way. And this one, oh wow, it's like these guys are these people, these researchers are, are rock stars um, because they've been cited sixteen hundred times since two thousand and fifteen. This, this is really great. What what is this again? This is scope. Scopus. Scopus. Okay. Do is this a free? This is not free, correct? Yeah, this is through the U of A. Okay. okay. Let me let me see what I can export. Ah, look at that. Okay. So bibliographic affiliations, right? PubMed oh, yeah, okay. ID. Um, oh, let me see. And you can get rid of stuff too. So like we don't need that. Right. Um, citation count. Uh, you want to be able to find it. Uh, yeah, you definitely want authors and author ID. Um, you can throw in there uh, keywords. Yes, uh, this is a lot of fun for me. I love doing yeah, this. Yeah, no, this is this is exactly what I, I would really. This is exactly the kind of tool I kind of would love to have right now. So, um, but yeah, um, I guess I'll have to look into that. Now, oops, I probably shouldn't have done that because there's 24,000 articles. I should have narrowed it down a little bit before I downloaded it. Of course. Um, well, it takes some learning to kind of learn the program, the, the system and how to how it all yeah, operates. And, so and like yeah. Web of Science had some nice data visualization tools. Um, oh, here's patents. Oh, I gotta get that's right, wonderful. This, wow. This is okay, and this is what popped up, right? Yeah. Whoops. Oops, okay. let me undo that. Let's just make the authors a little bit bigger. And 
that's their unique IDs. Um, but you can go in and then because it uses, like if you look here, how they have this set up, we, we could go in and clean this data up and you know separate out all the authors fairly easily enough. Uh, looks like just using the commas, not the best one, or we could replace the comma, but whatever. Um, and then what I don't see, and I thought I downloaded it, was um, this is author keywords, which could help you out. Uh, there's their affiliations. So this would be a little more fun to do because it's going to be um, very, if, you, if you're looking at this, it looks like these are a bit of a mess here because like you, there's multiple institutions that these of uh, these uh, rock stars um, are uh, associated with, which isn't surprising, right? You know, um, when I win the Nobel Prize, I'll probably pick up uh, Harvard too, you know? They don't have a Nobel Prize for uh, library and information science yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting on that. Um, but when they do, um, so that's how we you can dig around with it. And I know they have more data tools. It's just, like like I said, I've been lazy and I haven't uh, taught myself this uh, as well as I should, um, and I need to. Um, but here you can also look at limit the patents by the different uh, organizations. I don't know how good the like. Let's look at Japan, right? Why? Because I want to make sure that they're translating this right because a, a lot of patents are coming out of this area. Uh, it looks like they are, right? So I know I'm a ghost right now. Yes. Am I <laughs> running I on too long? I, I was going to say that. It's like Anita is <laughs> ghosted out. I'm ghosted out. Uh, I do want to call time. It is 1.30, which is usually when we end. So if anybody has to hop off, no problem. Um, Jason, any, any parting words that you want to... Um, I didn't get to PitchBook, and I'm sorry. Uh, PitchBook is awesome. So if I, let me uh, go back real quick before I lose this because I can't spell. Um, let's. Oh, that is funny. You're the librarian that cannot spell. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm dyslexic. So, <laughs> oh, yes. Excellent. So that makes I it fun. I talk a lot of times, so it's yeah. all good. That's why I don't like to do pitch decks. I always misspell words. Let's see if we get anything with this. No results found. Okay. <laughs> but um, let's go. Uh, we would have to be more general. Um, we would have to go into uh, bio, whatever, and come up with. Um, but you could see who's funding in this area broadly, right? So, um, and some reason PitchBook just sent me an email, but here's biotechnology, right? Excellent. So, um, and I just realized I have to hop over. To okay. So. Also, I am in Zoom land. The Fridays seem to be stacking up on Zoom meetings okay. for some reason, but um, I Let hope me just everybody... finish up with, with two words. Perfect. Remember, email Ryan and myself both. Um, if you don't hear back from me, uh, be pushy. It's okay. I'm not blowing you off. Really, I'm just a mess with my email. Um, and uh, soon I'll have make an appointment link back up and just use it, go crazy. Uh, I've spent a ton of times like with Courtney's interns, I've, I trained probably five or six of them, right? Well, you.